In this video, I'm going to discuss the problems associated with the internal rate of return or with the IRR. Now, I'm assuming that you've watched the overview video on the internal rate of return. So if you haven't watched that, make sure you do because I'm going to be taking a lot of concepts from that video and bringing them into this video. So in the last video, we concluded that the internal rate of return leads to the same result as the net present value as long as the projects are independent and they have conventional cash flows. So the first problem that can arise is a project having unconventional cash flows. Now, so far, projects that we've been dealing with have had conventional cash flows, meaning there's been a negative cash flow in time zero, and then the rest of the cash flows throughout the life of the projects have been positive. But notice how in this case, the cash flows throughout the life of the projects are a mix of positive and negative cash flows. So that's what we mean by unconventional, when there's a mix of positive and negative throughout the life of the project. So like the last video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these cash flows, here's the general MPV formula for it, and I'm gonna try a couple of different discount rates. So I'm gonna plug these discount rates into this R here in decimal form, and then I'm gonna see what the MPV is, and then maybe we can see what kind of relationship this project's cash flows has in terms of its rate and its MPV. So when you input all these discount rates, whether you do it in this formula here for these cash flows, or you input these cash flows in your financial calculator and then compute the MPV with these different rates, you get all of these MPV values. So for a discount rate of 0%, we have an MPV of negative $5. For a discount rate of 10%, we have an MPV of negative $1.74. And then for 20, 30, and 40, we have negative 28 cents, positive 6 cents, and negative 31 cents, respectively. So if we take this pattern and graph it with the MPV on the y-axis and the discount rate on the x-axis, as we did in the internal rate of return overview video, we get this shape here. And it's a little different than the one in the overview video. Notice how there are two points where the MPV is equal to zero. So that means there are two IRRs. So there's one IRR over here, and then there's another IRR over here. So what's going on here? And if you actually compute them, you would get 25% for this one right here, which is in between 20 and 30. And then this IRR here would be 33.3%. Now, the problem is, is that when you do this in your financial calculator, usually your financial calculator will only give you one of these answers. They usually won't give you the other one. You have to find the other one with trial and error, or you can use Excel as well. So notice that this project is only going to have a positive MPV between a discount rate of 25% and 33%. That's when the MPV is going to be greater than zero. So that sort of violates the rules that we established in the internal rate of return overview video. We said that if the required rate of return or the discount rate is less than the IRR, the MPV is going to be greater than zero. That's when we'll accept the project. Notice if we're working with this IRR, if the discount rate is less, then that IRR of 25%, the MPV is going to be negative. And then over here, the MPV is also negative when the discount rate is greater than 33%. But it's not necessarily negative if it's greater than 25%. If it's greater than 25% but less than 33 the MPV is positive. So there's a lot of rules going on here. And that's what happens when we have these unconventional cash flows. Basically, projects like this can violate the rules that we established in the overview video. So one of the problems with IRR is that it doesn't work with unconventional cash flows. Now, if you remember in the overview video, we said that the IRR leads to the same decision result as the MPV as long as the projects are independent with conventional cash flows. So what if the projects are not independent? So let's say that we are choosing between two mutually exclusive projects. Well, then another problem can arise in this case. So let's take these two projects, for example. We can only choose one of them. That's what mutually exclusive means. So we only have $100 to spend on a project. 
So if we spend $100 on this project, it's going to generate us cash flows of 50, 40, 40, and 30 from years one to four. And or if we spend $100 on this project, it will generate us cash flows of 20, 40, 50, 60 from years one to four. And then if you compute the IRR in your financial calculator for both of these projects, you would get 24% for this one and 21% for this project. So just by looking at the internal rates of return, we would think that we should take on this project with the higher internal rate of return of 24%. However, that's not always going to be the case. It's going to depend what the discount rate is or the required rate of return is of the company that's taking on these projects. So let's do another thing with these two projects. Let's find what their MPVs will be at different discount rates. So for example, for this project with these cash flows, if you figure out what the MPV is at a discount rate of 5%, you would get approximately $43 and so on and so on with the different dis discount rates for the different projects. So these MPVs here are based on these cash flows. These MPVs here that we got with the different discount rates are based on these cash flows. A lot of the MPV values are rounded to the nearest dollar. So just uh, take note of that. So now let's take both of these projects, their MPVs at these same discount rates. Notice how I used uh, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25% for the discount rates for both projects. Let's take both of these and graph it on the same axis where we have the MPV versus the discount rate. So if we take both of these projects and plot them on the same graph where the Y axis is the MPV in dollar terms, and the x-axis is the discount rate in percentage terms, we would end up with this right here. So this blue line represents all of these points plotted for this project. And then this red line here represents all of these points plotted for this project. So notice how there's going to be an MPV of zero for the red project at 24%. And then for the blue project, there's going to be an MPV of zero at 21% because those are the respective IRRs. So notice how the red project has a higher MPV value for most of the time until we reach a point right here. So we don't know what that discount rate is going to be there, but notice that there's a point at which both of the MPVs for these projects are going to intersect or they're going to equal. So what is this point right here? And if we compute that point, it would be 11.1% for which both of the MPVs for these projects equal. So if you take both of these projects, discount them at a rate of 11.1%, you would get the same MPV value. So this here is called the crossover rate. It's basically the rate at which two mutually exclusive projects have the same MPV if we discount all of their cash flows. And if you compute the MPV for both of these projects at that crossover rate, you would get a $26 MPV value. I think it's like $26.34, but I just rounded it to $26. So notice how based on the IRRs, this project seems like it is more worthy to take on than this one because it has an internal rate of return. And that is true, but only for rates or discount rates that are higher than 11.1%. Then the red line is going to be above the blue line, meaning the MPV is going to be higher. But notice that the required rate of return is less than that crossover rate. So if the required rate of return for both projects is like 9%, then this project is going to have a higher MPV. Notice how the blue line is going to be over the red line. So looking at two mutually exclusive projects and then computing both of their internal rates of return, we can't just take the project with the higher internal rate of return and assume that it will always give us a higher MPV because it depends on its required rate of return. It depends on its uh, discount rate. In this case, in this specific case, if the discount rate is less than 11.1%, less than that crossover rate, this project has a higher MPV. But if it's greater than this crossover rate, then this project will have a higher MPV. 
So that's another problem with using internal rates of return when we're dealing with mutually exclusive projects. So the two problems we went over are projects with unconventional cash flows. We can get multiple IRRs then. And then when we're comparing mutually exclusive projects, uh, basing the project decision just on the internal rate of return won't always give us the correct uh, decision. It depends on what the required rate of return of the project is. But other than these two problems that we discussed in this video, if the project is independent and it has conventional cash flows, the internal rate of return will always give us the same result as the net present value of whether to accept or reject a project. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.